Welcome back folks for new episode of Leaked. And today we'll cover another two high tier Swedish tank destroyers. We have the UDES-03 at tier 8 and the STRV-103-0 at tier 9. So the purpose of these two vehicles is to help you understand and get comfortable with the siege mechanics. So the siege mode that's only available to the high tier Swedish tank destroyers. So preparing you for the STRV-103B, the full production model of the S tank. Now these vehicles should arrive with the hybrid line, that's the light tanks, the medium tanks, and the heavy tanks for the Swedes in patch 9.17, likely around this holiday season. But what is the UDES-03? Well it stands for the Undersuckning Direct L Stritfordern. My Swedish is terrible, I know, but that basically translates into a study of direct fire combat vehicles. So this is their prototype project name. So it's like the Americans X project with the XM1. That's the M1 Abrams prototype. You have the XM2 slash three. That's the Bradley prototype and the XM8, which is the Thunderbolt prototype. So that's their X project. That's their prototype project. The 03 model was basically a lighter, cheaper, easy to produce version of the S tank. It has less armor, but has the same firepower, so it still could hold up against other tanks like the T-55s, T-54s. So that's the purpose of this whole project. Now they develop two prototypes to test out the gun and test out the hull separately. But what they found out was there were a few problems with the gun as well as the tracks. So the suspension as well as supporting the gun while shooting and new projects does require more resources so they did not improve on this model so they took the learnings and move on to vehicles like the UDES 14 or 13 and much later vehicles like the STRV 2000 so this was a stopgap for the Swedish tank designs but you do learn a few more things from the project so not that wasteful. And what is the Zero series of the S tank? Well, this is the pre production model of the S tank. So it has all the glitches and bugs, technically. So it has all the kinks not worked out. So this is the pre production model with less armor and less horsepower. They tested it with the British uh, 20 pounder and they test out the gun, test out the speed, change some of the armor around change the hydro pneumatic suspension to give a little bit more gun depression and elevation. So this is the pre-tweaked version of the S tank, simply enough. But here is the early stages of the S tank. So you already saw this slide if you already watched the B version video. So they test out the aiming system with the Cranvon's chassis. So they took the Cranvon, removed some of the road wheels, put a 20 pounder, and test out the suspension and how it shoots. So the ideology behind turretless tank destroyer like aiming mechanics is because there weren't that many great technologies back then for the stabilization of the gun. So when you're shooting the gun, you're not moving. So the Swedes thought, yeah, why not just put a turretless vehicle and we're basically ambushing a lot of other tanks. So we're not shooting on the move. So that's why we don't have a turret. And that's the whole ideology behind it. So they took the concept, mounted the aiming system on the Cranvon's chassis, test the same thing with the IKV-103 and the Sherman tank. So they like the system. Let's put it on the STRV. So here are two pre-production prototypes of the S tank. So this is the S1. This tests the suspension and the commander cupola. So it was pretty good. And they move on to a wooden model of the S2. So this is the more advanced version of the prototype. It has the gun, it has the engine, the drivetrain, the true compartments. So that's the S2 prototype right here. It's on display. And this is their designer, Mr. Sven Burgess, right here. He is a smart guy, super smart. So here is the actual production model of the S tank. So the Zero series went on to the A series, which quickly got upgraded into the B series. 
The A series had a problem with the engine, so lackluster engine as well as the hydro pneumatic suspension and some of the armor. So they improved it, tweaked the suspension, and put a fence, put a fence on the front. So that's the B series right here. They have the rib armor, yada yada. And for the C series, they added the fuel tanks. They increased the diesel engine from 240 to 290. So that helps with the aiming. It has two engines, so one's diesel, one's a turbine. Both engines work together, but you're using the diesel for the aiming part. So they upgraded that part. It has a better fire control system with a better uh, laser rangefinder, I believe. And the D series has reactive armor and applicate armor on the hull. So that's the STRV 103. We already talked a lot about it. But here is the UDES 03 project. So as I mentioned, the UDES is a prototype. They want to find a smaller, cheaper, lighter S tank with less resource consumption. So they drew up a design. They kind of liked it. So they test out the concept of a smaller S tank. So they mounted a mock-up next to a PBV uh, 302 APC right here. So that's the Swedish M113, if you will. But they test out the chassis to see if the ground clearance would work as well as the gun. So this gun could also elevate by itself, which is a little bit better than the S-Tank because the S-Tank's gun is fixed mounted. So they like the idea, even though there are a few problems such as blocking your view when the gun's elevated, but whatever. So they test out two prototypes, one's by Bofors, so this tests the gun and the shooting mechanics, and one's by Hugeland, oh god, <laughs> butchered the crap out of that word, but they test out the mobility of the vehicle. So two prototypes, one prototype for shooting, and the other one is for moving. They like the vehicle, but there were a few problems with the chassis and the suspension and other stuff, and the shooting stuff. So they took the research, came up with a few new designs for this vehicle. So they test out a few new designs. And they like the turret version. So this vehicle right here. But they abandoned the 03 model. So the 03 series. And went on to other tanks. So research purpose. That's the whole intention of the UDES project. But the legacy of the UDES 03 meant that they have better research, better understanding of what they want of the suspension of the design of their vehicles. And that later came out to the UDES 13, which is the IKV 91. This vehicle right here, you already know this tank, blah, 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 blah. They also turned out to modify the suspension of current Swedish vehicles, like the Stridsfordun 90, the Combat Vehicle 90. This vehicle right here. This is basically the Swedish version of the Bradley fighting vehicle, or the BMP. Yeah. BMP. It has troop compartments in the back, so if you know the Bradley, the M2 Bradley, this is the Swedish version, or Swedish version of the Bradley, if that makes sense to you. But understanding the UDES 03 and the research from it also modify future Swedish vehicles, like the STRV 2000, the T140-40. So that's the mock-up right here. This is actually a fake. This is a decoy. This is a model. This is not a real tank. I thought it was, but it's not. So what is the STRV 2000 T140 slash 40? That's the Swedish design of a main battle tank. So it has a 140 millimeter large gun, main cannon for the turret, as well as a remotely accessible or elevatable, if that's a term, for the 40 millimeter auto cannon. That's right here. So it's not exactly coax, but it has two main guns, 140 millimeter and a 40 millimeter auto cannon. <laughs> this is a mock-up, but they test out the liking of the mock-up with the Abrams, the M1A1 Abrams, and the Leopard 2 A4. And based on the previous experiences with the Cranbon, yep. Not enough resources, not enough money to buy or to make the actual STRV 2000. 
and produce this main battle tank than just buying one of these foreign made main battle tanks. So they chose the Leopard 2A4, recalled it, or well, not recalled it, renamed it into the STRV 121, and that was their main battle tank. Later, they bought the Leopard 2A5, modified it, and called it the STRV 122. So that's the Swedish history of armored vehicles. But, I mean, they did learn a lot from the UDS-03, and this was the mobility chassis rotting away in some sort of scrapyard. So that sucks, but the lessons were learned, were learned, and move on to future Swedish designs. So there you go, folks. History, right? I could talk long and hard about the UDESO project. Oh my god, there are so many different designs, and holy crap, all of them are super interesting, but we're on a time crunch. So yeah, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> so here is the UDS-03. So as you can see, it looks like a smaller S tank. Doesn't have the cage armor, doesn't have the dozer blades, doesn't have the rib armor, doesn't have, you know, all the fancy stuff, but it's a smaller S tank. So still pretty decent looking. This is basically the tier eight E25, if you will. And here are the in-game screenshots. So the HD model, it has a 90 millimeter stock gun. So you're using this stock gun for the 105, two versions of the 105, difference in barrel length. And that's pretty much it, but there you go, folks. And here is the zero series of the S tank. So pre-production or pre-texturing of the tank. So it doesn't look that pretty, I know, but it's super preliminary. Now, I do not have actual screenshots of this vehicle, of the Zero Series S tank, because reasons. So, yeah, no pictures just yet. Been waiting. But we already talked a lot about the Siege Mode mechanics. So, click on the white circle popping up right now on the upper right hand side of the video to watch the Siege Mode mechanics breakdown video. So we already talked a lot about it, but you press the X button, that's the whole lock, to turn on Siege Mode. Turning on Siege Mode gives you better gun depression, better gun elevation, a little bit more DPM, and rate of fire at the cost of your speed. So that's a trade-off. Also, you fully aim instantaneously, so you don't have an aim time in Siege Mode. But we already talked a lot about it, so watch that video first, if you do not know. Or if you're new to the channel, just watch that video first. But here are the collision models of the UDES-03. Yep, it has no armor. <laughs> 20 millimeter of armor for the hull. And it's the same program that they used, or the picture was taken with the same program for the STRV-103B video. So I hate this program because they model the gun and the tracks as normal armor, when in reality it should be space armor because these components does not actually damage your whole vehicle's health or HP pool. So yeah, the models are not that great, but as you can see, there are space armor on the sides, so pretty good against high explosive anti tank. And we'll throw a few shots like the Bat Chats space armor next to the turret. Hate that thing. Ugh. It's very well sloped similar to the S tank, but it's only 20 millimeters. So yeah, we'll get overmatched. And so does for the 30 millimeter parts, the strips of 30 millimeter right here and for the track links right here. So yeah, it will be overmatched with a 90 millimeter gun. Yeah, this vehicle is not known for armor, unlike the actual B model of the S tank. So don't go expecting to bounce shots. Also, tracks are modeled as normal armor, main guns model, blah, 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 blah. Only 20 to 30 millimeters of armor, so useless at tier 8. The smallest caliber gun used by tier 8 vehicle, or yeah, most tier 8 vehicles use at least a 90 millimeter. So the lowest caliber is a stock gun that's a 75. So you have it on the Panther 2 with the 75 millimeter L70 which nobody used because they already unlocked the 75mm L100 
That's the Pinocchio's gun. They also have the AMX 1390, which use a 75 millimeter. But yeah, it's just don't count on it. <laughs> you will be overmatched, and getting hit means you will lose health. So, yep, don't get hit. But as you can see, the upper plate will bounce uh, some shots if they cannot overmatch it. So about 100 millimeter effective for the 20 millimeter parts. And it's about 150 for the 30 millimeter parts, but you will get overmatched, so don't even think about it. But that's pretty much it. So, yeah, the collision model for this vehicle is super simple. I don't have to do any analysis with the sloping and stuff because it's only 20 millimeter. <laughs> and here are the collision models for the S tank, the Zero series. It's unfinished, <laughs> so it's super placeholdery. There's no armor values other than 18, 20 millimeter for the tracks, but that's, yeah, that's not, yeah, whatever. Also, where's the gun? <laughs> the gun's missing. <laughs> so this is super preliminary, super placeholdery. It's in Finnish, in Finnish, unfinished. My English sucks. But yeah, it's incomplete. So inspection's over, right? There's no sloping or counter sloping off of the armor whatever so yeah nothing to consider nothing here moving on Ugh. so here are the main stats for the UDS 03 so it's going to be a tier 8 normal Swedish tank destroyer should have a crew of 3 so similar to the S tank normal matchmaking will cost you 2.51 million credits so that's about the average has only 992 hit points and this is kind of new to world of tanks usually you have a zero at the end not a two not a uneven number well, that's the even number but you know undistributed or div divisible by zero divisible by zero divisible by ten number so yeah it's kind of weird but mostly likely to to not getting one shotted by 150 millimeter high explosive round i think whatever has a 730 horsepower engine weighs 20.56 tons so about half of the tier 10 strv 103 b version so the horsepower per ton ratio is amazing 35.506 super great top speed of 75 kilometers per hour reverse of 75 kilometers per hour with that horsepower per ton ratio and that top speed and reverse speed this thing just zips around. Hull traverse is average, 28 degrees per second. Turret traverse is for the elevation of the gun, that's 26 degrees per second. So, average. Now, terrain resistance is slightly below average, but that's to counteract the high horsepower turn ratio. So, yeah, balances out, but still, this is super high. View range is 370, so average. Radio range is standard, above 700. So, good. Hull armor is 20 at the front, 20 at the sides, 20 at the rear. No turret, obviously. The top gun is 105mm with 40 rounds. So that's pretty good for a tier 8. 10 more than the chariot tier. Fires APCR, APCR, and high explosive. Penetration is 288. That's astoundingly good. That's great for a tier 8 tank destroyer. The average penetration for a tier 8 TD is like 240, 250, so that's, yeah, that's crazy, that's astoundingly good. Gold shell is also pretty good, 330. Alpha is kind of low, the usual alpha is around 500 or so, but you're punching a lot of holes with the DPM, so 2500. Now this looks like a placeholder stat, so very similar to the tier 10 as well as tier 9, so this is a kind of a placeholder stat but accuracy is still like the tier 10 0.3 takes three seconds to aim but for this gun in travel mode you have 20 degrees of elevation so you could still aim upwards theoretically but it still takes three seconds to aim you can shift into the siege mode which presumably increase the dpm i don't know how much but there's no screenshots there's no sample videos about it so 
I'm presuming like 3000 BPM with 10 degrees of gun depression and 35 elevation because that's the usual uh, gun depression and elevation for the S tank. So it could be like that. Who knows? Assumptions. So here are the stats pages of the UDES 03. So it's a little bit different than the STRV 103, but uses the same gun. So the L51, not the L62. So they cut down the barrel length, but eh, it's about the same gun. Now, as you can see, the stock gun is a 90 millimeter. Still pretty good at 223 millimeters of pin. So yeah, also it's pretty fast too. So 1,275 meters per second for AP shell, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not as good as the Grill 15s. 1,400 meters per second for the AP shell, but it's like APCR, so pretty fast. So take note of the camo rating. So it's 45.8%. <laughs> I mean, you think the 40.8 on the STRV 103B was pretty good. This is still, <laughs> this is even more insane. This is just as insane as the S tank, but it's better than the E25. Yeah, crazy, right? Also the stock gun has, yeah, not that bad performance as well. So, yep. Also take note that the upgraded 105, I think this is the second gun doesn't have the 20 degrees of elevation, whereas the top gun has the 20 degrees of elevation with better uh, shell velocity. Yep, so slightly better shell velocity and the 20 elevation degrees angle. So this is the fixed mounted 105. So you have three guns, but eh, doesn't look that bad of a grind. And here are the main stats for the Zero series of the S tank. So it's going to be a tier nine Swedish tank destroyer has a crew of three, similar to the S tank, the B version, will cost you 3.51 million credits. So very similar to the average, which is 3.45 or something, whatever, tier nine, has 1,510 health. So that's still pretty good considering the fact that the tier 10 has 90 more health. So surprising, has 730 horsepower, for the engine, so very similar to the tier 10, as well as the UDES 03, weighs 36.705 tons. So the horsepower per ton ratio is not as insane, but still pretty good, about 20. Top speed of 50 kilometers per hour, reverse of 45, hull traverse of 40 degrees per second. So still pretty decent, but comparing to the UDES, mm, does feel kind of slow, but the terrain resistance is above average, so that's to help boost the horsepower per ton ratio even more. Has 380 meters of rear range, surprising because 10 more than the actual tier 10, so what? Radio range is standard, mm -hmm. 18 millimeter of armor at the front, 16 on the sides, 16 in the rear. <laughs> nope. Has the same gun as the tier 10, the 105 L62. Carries 50 rounds, fires APCR, APCR, and high explosive with 308 millimeters of pin and 350 for the gold APCR. So the same gun actually, with a low alpha as well. So that kind of sucks. Rate of fire is the same, placeholder likely, DPM is the same, placeholder, reloads the same, accuracy is the same, and aim time is the same. Now surprisingly, it has one degree of gun depression and one elevation. So this is different than the UDES 03 and the B version of the S tank. So I'm wondering if this is a typo or I don't know, artifact of the data, who knows, but presumably with the boost, so it should be about 3,250 DPM in the siege mode and 10 degrees of gun depression, 12 elevation. That's the initial elevation angles of the S tank before they buff the hydropneumatic suspension for the B series. So that's assumptions based on history. So who knows, but here are the actual stats of the S tank, the zero series. So take a note, 
of the camouflage rating, so it's slightly better than the B series at tier 10. Slightly, but not much. Also, the shell velocity is super fast, so you can't miss, hopefully. But you still have to aim, so yeah, point and click, super easy. But pause this video if you want to zoom in, other stuff, yada yada. And here are the final thoughts and opinions about the UDES 03. So both tier 8 Swedish vehicles are insane. So this tank alongside with the Emil 1 are just crazy. This tank has the penetration, the accuracy, the siege mode with presumably buff DPM from the siege mode, has the gun angles and the boosted elevation from the gun placement. Also, it has insane top speed. 75 kilometers per hour, both forwards and backwards, <laughs> and it has 35.5 horsepower per ton ratio. So what that means is, you can jump the ramp and jump the broken bridge on Westfield backwards. <laughs> oh yeah, you can do it forwards. I can do it backwards, bro. Come at me. <laughs> Holy crap! And it has better camouflage rating than the E25. So that's, that's crazy. That's, oh my god, broken. But it is counterbalanced with low HP, obviously. And the mode switching time, so it does take time to switch between the modes. Also, there's no armor, so getting hit by high explosive means you're dead. Terrain resistance is below average to counterbalance the horsepower per time ratio. So, eh, I mean, it's alright, it's not that much. You don't get really bogged down based on the weight and stuff, so it's okay. And the alpha, to a small degree, is kinda under average, but yeah, it's alright, it's fine. So, it has the same travel mode, gun performance, and view range as the tier 10 STRV 103B, but with better mobility because of the horsepower per turn ratio and camo. <laughs> what? has better camouflage than the E25 by 1.7% and if I recall correctly it's close to rivaling the best camo in the game which is the Renault UE57 47.1% so it has 45.8% that's close that's like 1% off 1.3 crazy right? <laughs> so if you're feeling lucky you can actually go active scouting with this thing, or passive scouting. If you have uh, binoculars and camouflage in it, you could do both. But it's a stupid and bad idea, but this tank is small and fast. Both forwards and backwards. <laughs> and with crazy horsepower per turn ratio, you could go active scouting. It's a stupid idea, but you could do it. <laughs> so that's how insane it is. Now, it is the best penetration of tier 8 tank destroyers now. So it's beating the ISU-152's BL-10 by 2mm, so congrats. And does have 10 more rounds than the Charioteer with basically the same gun, but with better accuracy. So same alpha, but better accuracy. Doesn't have the squash head though, the high explosive squash head. So kind of sucks, but you do get 10 more rounds of spamming stuff. So also you get better DPM, so yeah. It's like a chair tier, but better. Also, the HV pool is less at tier 8 than at tier 10, obviously. So this gun is actually way deadlier because less HP to go through to kill opponents. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But don't get hit. This tank has no armor. 20mm the most, or at most parts of the tank, and 30mm at the best. So... Yeah, you get penetrated, you get overmatched, doesn't matter. Also, average enemy alpha at tier 8 with high tier vehicles like tier 10 is around 500 to 750. So that's more than half your health. So don't get touched, don't get hit, don't go ramming stuff. Also, if you get hit by artillery shell, it's usually 150 millimeter plus high explosive. That's most of your health, gone. If not, you're being one shot it. So, yeah, don't get hit, but you shouldn't have a problem with that because how fast this vehicle is, and it's super sneaky, so, yeah, it's fine. So, is it worth it? If it has a limited traversable gun, like ISU or E25, 
it's broken. It's it's beyond broken. It's just like no more other tank destroyers at tier eight, broken. But it is kind of counterbalanced with the limited gun traverse or the siege mode, I guess. But still, it's in the siege mode. <laughs> You're gonna camp like every other tank destroyer. So with a good scout, with the supposed three thousand plus DPM in siege mode. This is a camper's delight of a tank destroyer. It's super sneaky. So expect like three of them or all the UDES O3s camping the top left or top no bottom right. Top left or bottom left of the Prokhorovka map. So somewhere in the bushes are a bunch of UDES O3s in siege mode. If they find you, you're dead. <laughs> It has about the same DPM as a tier 10 medium tank, about. So, reloads every 7 seconds or so. Oh god. <laughs> if you have a platoon of these, you're, you're ripped. <laughs> oh, broken. So, wait for the test server to evaluate the siege mode. And see how well it works with these vehicles. But, if it's good, holy crap. These things are just broken, just so annoying to kill. Also remember that leak videos and the stats from these videos are preliminary, so they are subject to change. And all the gun stats on the tier 8, the tier 9, and the tier 10 are the same, so eh, likely placeholders. So yeah, just be cautionary, obviously. And here are the final thoughts about the Zero series of the S tank. So feels a little bit, yeah, feels a lot actually, preliminary and placeholdery, so there is no actual collision models. I just don't want to let this vehicle out of the leaked videos because there's a gap and, you know, doesn't feel complete, other stuff. So strengths are the gun, obviously, the penetration, the accuracy, the siege mode with the DPM, and the gun depression. Top speed is also pretty good with the horsepower per time ratio, and the terrain resistance, and the camouflage rating, but it does have the low health, not as critically low, as the tier 10, but still low health, and does take time to switch with the mode, no armor, alpha is low, and the travel mode DPM is actually less than the average of tier 9 TDs. Tier 9 TDs have the best DPM of all TDs. Surprisingly, tier 10s are more focused on large alpha, so that's the difference. But the same travel mode gun performance with 10 more meters of view range than the tier 10. Huh? With slightly better horsepower per time ratio and hull traverse at the cost of armor. So, yeah, surprising. Also, this has better camo than the tier 10, the B version of the S tank. Only 90 less health, too. Kind of crazy, but this has no armor, no cage armor, no space armor, no dozer blades, so whatever. No actual armor thickness. So this is basically a M56 Scorpion for the Swedes. So don't get touched, don't get hit, don't get high explosive, but your armor will probably change with the actual stats. But if it doesn't, just don't get hit, obviously. Also special note, tier 9 TDs have the best TDs or best DPM of TDs, whereas tier 10s are about alpha. So that's why the DPM is below average than most, but it's still pretty good, I mean, in the siege mode, presumably, because that's like 3000 DPM, right? So presumably, yeah. So is it worth it? Well, it's very placeholdery, so that's a new term, I guess. So wait for the actual stats. I highly doubt it will be the final, based on the current meta or current iteration of the stats, so I doubt it. But the playstyle should be like more of a sneaky S tank, whereas the Tier 10 S tank, the B version, could take a few hits, whereas this vehicle is focused on mobility rather than the armor. So this should be a mobile version, whereas the Tier 10 is the armor version. Should be. But if it is the final version, all the stats are final, just from this video, then it gets the same treatment as the Swedish hybrid line with the heavy tanks. So keep the Tier 8, skip the Tier 9, or you don't have to skip the Tier 10, but yeah, just the tier 8 is good enough. So 
doesn't cost a lot of credits and you could get two tier eights for the price of tier 10. So yeah, getting two OP tier eights, why not, right? So all hail our Swedish overlords at tier eight at least. So yeah, holy crap, the email one just got like and the UDES 03 with 75 kilometers per hour top speed going forwards and backwards and with 35.5 <laughs> horsepower per time ratio just insane and the gun performance is amazing for a tier 8 tank destroyer also the alpha is you know mitigated by the lower health pool so holy crap it's broken man so there you go folks the high tiers of swedish vehicles the tank destroyers and the heavy tanks but just keep the tier 8 because yeah just broken so there you go folks hopefully you guys enjoyed this video thank you guys for watching thank you for watching the video oh don't do the swedish accent <laughs> but thank you guys for watching this video as always i'll see you guys next time peace